Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I wanted to come and run my mouth for a quick second. You know what? I wanted to say real fast. <laughs> okay, listen. You know, I just really got into, like, the other girls when it comes to the Real Housewives world. Like, you know, I've always been into, like, Atlanta and Potomac, basically. But I've seen, you know, episodes and, you know, a season here or there of the other franchises. But as of recently, I've started watching, like, complete seasons. But I've always noticed, <laughs> even if I didn't watch a season, I've always noticed how when it comes to reunion time, the girls, no matter what city it is, outside of Atlanta and Potomac, the girls are going to look a complete and utter disaster. So the pictures were released today, or at least I saw them today. Maybe it was yesterday, of the Orange County reunion. Now, someone leaked the picture. You know, I just saw the whole, I just saw the whole bold face fly. Somebody leaked that picture. I think it was Teddy from Beverly Hills. She was on Beverly Hills. <laughs> I think she leaked that picture. I don't know. Let me stop. Let me, I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. I remember being on Twitter and I saw like, it was like a real like, you know, kind of like, it wasn't a good picture. And I saw them sitting down. But anyways, I saw a picture you know, the full picture that was released by Bravo. And the only one who looked halfway decent was Shannon. And Shannon really looked like she was going to the club, like a night with the girls. Woo, you know. You know the white girls, they like to say, woo, woo, woo. Yeah. Um, Shannon looked cute. Gina looked like she was kind of cute in, like, going to the club. I thought Noelle, she looked a fool. I thought Heather looked a complete fool. <laughs> I thought, what's her name, Jennifer? Looked the fool. Emily looked the fool. Girl. Now, Mary dropped some tea before she left Salt Lake City, and she said that they have to submit three choices to the producers. And the producers are someone on the staff. They get to pick, I guess they have the final say so. Or they have a, a say have a say in what the girls are gonna wear. Well, we know they give them a theme. And that's another thing too. Why is it that the only person that gets a theme is like Atlanta and Potomac? <laughs> Why does this kept the theme y'all need to be giving to us some white girls? Cause they be looking a fool. Cause y'all let them girls say come come as you are and honey they literally come at girl it looked like it looked it looked like they just said girl let's just go I don't like it I don't like it I don't like it I think they look a fool I think they always look a fool um, Beverly Hills always look a fool and it, and it's like either they look a fool or either they look like they're going to different events. <laughs> it's either either they gonna look a fool, or either they're gonna look like they all going to different spots. It's gonna be it's one person gonna look like they're going to a ball, the next person gonna look like they're going to happy hour, the next person gonna look like they're going to the club, the next person look like they're going to a PTA meeting, the next person gonna look like they're going to church, the next person gonna look like they're going to to, to the first the, to anniversary for the pastor and wife, first lady. Like, girl, they, they look a fool. Anyways, I just wanted to get that off my chest. Who are we talking about? Hold up. All right. I remember this girl. I think this is her. All right. So who are we talking about? Remember that clip? It still makes it its way around. Um, remember the girl? She was in a the movie theater, and there's this guy behind her. And he's like, yeah, let me have uh, some Skittles. And she's like, ooh. And he's like, let me have uh, like uh, a large soda. She's like, ooh, he got money. And he's like, let, let me have a large popcorn. And she's like, ooh, give us some all. He got money. I know y'all know that clip. Anyways, I think this is her show, Abbott Elementary. So she has a show. Her name is Quintana Bronson. 
it's a cute little show. I just started watching it the other night. I'm on episode three, I believe. Anyways, uh, this is according to the Jasmine brand. Um, <laughs> Quintana? Quinta. God, I know I'm destroying her name. We're going to call her Q. We're going to call her Q for short. Uh, Q mistakenly worked for a sex hotline. It was really gross. I couldn't get through it. So while Q was enjoying the success of her hit sitcom, Abbott Elementary, it looks like there's a previous job that she isn't too fond of. During her Tuesday night appearance on Late Night with Seth Meyers, Bronson 32 shared some interesting life events that led to her acting in comedy. During her interview, the She Means Well author revealed that once upon a time, she accidentally got a job working in a uh, working an adult hotline. So I needed some money because I was really broke. And I saw an opportunity on Craigslist for some voiceover work. And I was like, oh, I want to be in cartoons one day. I love to, <laughs> I love to be in cartoons. I want to be in cartoons one day. I love to do that. According to Bronson, the job description was looking for someone to play a character for someone to call you up and have a good time, which sounded fun to her. She was given the name Crystal for her persona. And she was in a picture of video vixen Buffy the Body. <laughs> I don't know why when I read, well, I actually saw a clip of her talking about this online. When she was telling the story, I was actually, uh, I was actually giggling. And then she said, I had to pretend to be her on the phone for the people that called. And it was really gross. I couldn't get through it. But they, but they did tell the truth. They said you would get paid a dollar a minute. And I made $3 that day because <laughs> she said something in the interview when I saw her on TV. She said something like, uh, when she was talking about Buffy the Body, she was like, it's all about it. <laughs> she said something like, it's a, she, when she was doing the interview with, who was it? Seth Myers. She was talking about how she had to pretend she was like, it's Buffy the Body. Um, that's who they presented her as. And she was like, well, it's a lot of white people in the audience. <laughs> Basically saying, y'all not, not, not going to know who Buffy the Body is. So, girl, I was sitting here thinking. I said, girl, now I'm not the best at math. <laughs> but when she said a dollar a minute, I said, well, girl, hold up. Let's get the calculator out. We already know that one times 60, for, well, okay. For those who don't know, one times 60 is 60, okay? <laughs> so then we're gonna do 60 times eight, because usually people work an eight hour day. We're just gonna keep it real basic and simple. Oh, come on, calculator. That's $480. That's $480 in a day, okay? And we're just gonna do a five day work week. We're not even gonna, we're not even gonna include overtime. 480 times five is $2,400. Girl, we're gonna do a four week work period, right? 2,400 times four is 9,600. Baby, that's almost 10 stacks. 10 stacks to act like you playing with yourself on the phone? I could do that. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> What's the number? <laughs> Bitch, next time you do an interview, tell us the number, girl. Because you might think it's gross. I don't think nothing gross about 10 stacks a month. Okay? Show down. I'm here for it. I wish you would have told us the name of the company because I would have been Googling. What y'all want me to sound like? <laughs> Who y'all want me to look like? Just send me the picture. <laughs> okay? Baby, you know the white men, baby, they love that shit. Girl, you know they be want to... <laughs> Girl, it probably made me sick to my stomach after a while, though. Because you know all they want is BBC. Girl. But for $10,000 $10, a month, I mean, girl, we just pretending. Girl, we just faking, bro. <laughs> Anyways. Who else? Who else? Ooh, let's talk about it. All right, so mother of young thug's child killed in shooting at Atlanta bowling alley. A young lady has lost her life 
over a bowling ball. APD homicide commander Lieutenant Ralph Woodlock said of the altercation that allegedly led to the shooting of Lakiva Jackson. Um, Lakivia Jackson, the mother of one of Young Thug's children, died Thursday in a shooting at Metro Fund Center Bowling Alley in Atlanta. Atlanta Police Department arrived on the scene at about 10.50 p.m. where Jackson, 31, was found deceased in the parking lot with multiple gunshot wounds. According to a statement from APD, although the investigation is still ongoing, officers determined that the incident began with a dispute over a bowling ball, which escalated to gunfire. As she was leaving the bowling alley, per the statement, police have detained... Wait. I'm sorry, per the statement. Um, police have, to say, have detained one female involved in the altercation who is cooperating in their, in their asking for the public's help in identifying all parties involved. Um, they're also searching for a male suspect who might have been captured on surveillance footage, according to CBS 46. This is truly an atrocity. A young lady has lost her life over a bowling ball. We talk about conflict resolution time and time again, and this is an escalated uh, dispute, so we will work this case through the night and we will find the person responsible. We know who you are, so go ahead and turn yourself in. Lakiva, Lakiva, I know I'm pronouncing her name wrong. Mother Sharina Jackson told the outlet that her daughter was leaving her best friend's birthday when she was shot and that she spoke on the phone with Lakiva shortly before she died, noting that she suspected the, she, noting that she, the suspect waited 20 minutes in the parking lot for her to come out. I didn't know that was gonna be the, that was gonna be the last time I talked to my baby. I could hear her over the phone crying and screaming, and then her best friend said she's not breathing. Um, she shared a 14 year old son with Young Thug, um, according to CBS 46. Girl, that's a mess. Y'all gonna have to do better, y'all. It is not that deep. Y'all out here, y'all out here killing people over a bowling ball? That's all I'm be fooling with y'all niggas. Y'all be crazy. I mean, y'all is crazy. I don't know if the suspect is a white male or a black male. I mean, I'll put my money on. I'm gonna leave it alone. It's weird. Like, y'all be not here killing people over a bowling ball? Hopefully, Young Thug is a decent father. Um, a more than decent. Since uh, his child doesn't have a mother now. Hopefully, he's always been in his child's life. Um, and he can be there to help, um, not even help raise, raise his child. Anyways. Um, that's sad. Um, Lakeith Sanfield, the one who y'all, the one who had y'all uh, up in an uproar the other day, cause he, um, had his legs crossed <laughs> and had on some lace socks. Y'all was talking about, girl, he is, he, girl, it's an attack on black masculinity. <laughs> girl, like y'all grandpapas wasn't walking around here with nut huggers. Bell bottoms, dick print on a right thigh, fucking y'all grandmamas. Girl, pant, pants look like look like they got on leggings. Your grand your granddaddy was walking around here with a whole crop top on right beside the Osley brothers. But y'all worried about Lakeith with some goddamn stockers on. Ask your grandmama did it stop your big daddy from fucking up getting some pussy. Since y'all so worried about girl, the, this this black masculinity and girl's attack on the black man and your big mama got seven children. Okay. Clearly she liked it. Crop top, girl tied in the front, leggings and all. Anyways. Lakeith Stanfield says he noticed signs of alcoholism while shooting for <laughs> Y'all be pissing me off. Y'all be pissing me off. Y'all be saying some of the dumbest shit online. I'm sorry. 
Y'all be acting like Lakeith Stanfield is the first nigga who put, who crossed his legs or put on some lace. Niggas been walking around here with with, with women garbs on, okay? For the longest. <laughs> Ask your big daddy what he used to wear back in the day. I'm sure he'll tell you. Or maybe he won't, <laughs> okay? Lakeith Stanfield says he noticed signs of alcoholism while shooting film. I wasn't able to I wasn't able to function a whole day without having it. Lakeith Stanfield is getting candid about his journey to sobriety. In a recent interview, the California native shared with readers his personal experience with alcoholism and noted that he first realized he was overcome um, by it while shooting the Jay-Z produced film The Harder They Fall. He also says his former co-star, Jamie Lee Curtis, was also very supportive of his sobriety journey. Lakeith Stanfield wants fans to know that even their favorite celebrities and on-screen talents go through hardships. During a recent um, cover interview, the Atlanta star opened up about ad ad identifying um, he was an alcoholic in his journey sobri sobriety. He also says he thinks it's important to and he also think I'm sorry, he also says he thinks it's an important thing to share with others. In the interview, he stated, this is something I never really talked about before, but I think it's something that I need to talk about because I want people to understand that there's something that you can get through, that it's something that you can get past. And I want people to feel empowered by the fact that the person they're looking at on the screen has gone through the addiction and survived it. The 30-year-old, oh, he 30? I did not know he was 30. He young. I don't know why I thought he was older than 30. Um, the 30-year-old actor goes on to describe the moment he realized he was dependent on alcohol while shooting for Netflix is the harder they fall, canceling a massage due to overwhelming anxiety, and immediately wanting a drink. Girl. Canceling a massage due to anxiety and immediately wanting a drink. Damn. I just got up and canceled the massage and told the masseuse to leave. And she was probably like, what the hell is going on? And I didn't really know what was happening either. I just thought, I'm anxious. Let me just drink some wine. As soon as I drink the wine, the anxiety goes away. Girl, I mean, if you can't go without, if you can't, all I can say is if you can't go without alcohol, if you can't go without your, and we all got our vices, girl. We all got our vices. But if you can't go some days or a day or two without some. It might be a problem. I don't know. I'm not no doctor, so I can't diagnose no goddamn body, okay? Um, but if you have to have it to function, then it might be a problem. Shout out to the Keith. Um, who else? <laughs> mm. <laughs> it was somebody I wanted to talk about. I don't want to talk about her no more. Oh, girl, we can talk. I don't feel like talking about them no more either, girl. <laughs> we can talk about Kim and Pete in another video, girl, because they're going to wear me out, girl. I'll talk to y'all later, bye.